on the planet is, is quite a heavy vibration, you know, because it's so thickly, it's so dense with uh, personal identity. And personal identity is inclined towards selfishness. It perceives uh, strongly through the paradigm of me and mine, and uh, very individual, very self-seeking, you see. Where it is a person, love is not in its highest expression. The love, if it, when it works through the person, seems also to be a bit selfish, a bit myopic, limit, limited. You know. But the capacity, the potential of the, of the human spirit is enormous. You know. Seem presently we are in a web of strong psychological energy. And it manifests sometimes in this in the, the, the things that gives us so much pain. We are not being punished for being here or for the life that you're you're experiencing, you see. It's more opportunity for growing from this. Because the consciousness is using each form somewhat to experience the sense of transcendence and growth and understanding. So this is where I would put really the the power of duality, you know. The sense of experiencing and of you know discriminating and discerning what is true from untrue, what is real from unreal and so on. Uh, what is I and other and and if these I and other if it is ultimate, if it is final, if it is a fact, or is it really just a a kind of like a an exercise for the consciousness is it a kind of mirroring a dynamic mirroring that happens over time and culture for the consciousness to experience the sense of growth or transcendence is it it is not helpful to think that one is being punished for things um, at a certain point you will see that your life has not does not have just one reading. It has. It's like a potential. It can be read in different ways according to the, the temperament and capacity of the one of the onlooker, and sometimes you yourself can be the onlooker to your own life. You are not sort of like wrapped up inside your life like you are a parcel or something. Sometimes you can look, and this is what meditation and contemplation and self inquiry helps us to look outside of, from outside the box, the box being our conditioning. Uh, psychological conditioning and so on, our belief systems and identities and so on, that we can look at that almost uh, from a distance, uh, with some sense of object, objectivity. You know, like you look uh, from from an objective place. And there's no truly objective place; it's mostly subjective. When the subject is a person, then the subjectivity is not pure. When the subject is the self or the consciousness, everything seems different, lighter, and uh, transparent, and fluid. It is not helpful to think that you are responsible for life. Your life is flowing on, like flowing. It was already flowing before humankind made our appearance here. So obviously we were not there to look after it in the beginning. And I don't know if we are doing so well looking after it now. It's a bit of an arrogance to think. Mother Earth looks after us, God looks after us also. You can say that that's one that's one level of looking. There are other levels, and, uh, and then my hope is to bring you to a levelless place, a place where the mind is not the measuring stick for life anymore. That you are the life, and uh, the vital force is the pulse of life. You are the witness of this life, the experiencer of this life. But with less and less personal attachments or needs, the life becomes something very beautiful. It becomes light and uh, open and full of wonder and the joy of God. You know? We are all of this. You are not separate from it. But at different stages, it will have a different feeling. Sometimes you have to feel separate from it. Then you have to feel again you are one with it. And then you may come to a point where you are beyond all the notions that we use to measure or to evaluate or to have a sense of what life is, mostly interpret. You know? So. It is a divine adventure, you know. This existence, you can say. And the more you discover the truth, the more life will be beautiful for you. 
and it will be beautiful for you, it will be beautiful for others, because when you are in your beauty, in your peace, be- beauty meaning here peace, not, not facial features, uh, but beauty means in your light, in your truth, in your understanding, standing in the, in the heart of love, and then it radiates. This is the power of the love and of wisdom. It radiates, You're not necessarily um, deliberately. It just radiates, just like if you, just like the sun is just radiating. It's not, it's not putting energy to do that. It's simply, it's the nature of the sun to radiate. And uh, we are like uh, somehow, like balls of radiation of God's energy and love and uh, wisdom. You see. And everything that comes into your orbit, you know, is touched and enlivened, so to speak, enriched, empowered uh, by the presence of that love and that truth. You know. So it's not a small adventure. It all depends on where uh, the mind and where the identity is placed. If it is placed as a person, it will somehow confine, restrict, and limit the sense of this love. But the love is limitless. You see. The sense of the person feels like a contraction in the great expanse. But that contraction is not from the cosmic point of view, it's a small thing. A person as a concept is a small thing actually. And you are shedding personhood. Love helps you to shed it beautifully and to again move, even in this body, you see. Um, to move with a with a with the God light, with the Christ light, uh, Shiva being, whatever name. We have many names. They all point to the same thing. The names are many, isn't it? The names are many. Like we sometimes we have so many words for one thing. This is what the Tassaros is, isn't it? There are so many words for one thing, and sometimes we um, we feel we are talking about different things. The mind sometimes tricks us, you know, into feeling like we are talking about different things, different gods. You know, different energies, different. It's all the same. We're all the same. We're all the same. It is all the same. This is all the same. The same one. And when you can begin to appreciate that and to see this, you will feel in the the oneness, and not separate from the oneness, but at some point you will move beyond the concept of oneness. You will just forget about it altogether. The life is not trying to remember itself. It doesn't need that. It's far too fresh sometimes for memory. But memory is part of the great dance, part of the great feeling. And all of this can be included, but not exclusively. You see? So very good. Thank you. Om Shanti 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 Om Shanti Shanti Shanti